Welcome to our first ever uh, Breakfast Club live webinar on Facebook. So uh, things being what they were, this, uh, this turned out to be a very uh, unique solution to the problem. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. For those that don't know Valerie, I've had the pleasure of knowing Valerie for, I don't know, what, three years now, Valerie? Something like that? Four years? Five years? Yes. Lost track, right? And uh, I, I think you'll get a, uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. It's, it's, uh, it's worthwhile content. Um, it's something that, um, you know, you can never have enough information about job search. And that's really what today's presentation is. So Valerie, I'm going to turn myself off here. You're on the title slide. And again, just let me know when to turn the page. Great. Thank you, George. So good morning, everyone. Yes, this is a little different. Um, I'm going to try my best to keep looking into the camera and not down at my slides or over to the right for Facebook to see what's going on. But I, I will check. So if you see my eyes roaming around, that's what's going on. <clears throat> so let me just slide this screen over here. And go to the next uh, slide. That'd be great. So just for housekeeping, the slides that I am presenting will all be provided to you. I will give a, a copy to Jerry when we're all done. So feel free to take screenshots if you want. I don't mind. Um, take notes if you want. I don't mind. Um, but I will give them to you so you don't have to really ask about it. Um, ask questions, again, because I have two monitors here. I might not see the questions. George might have to jump in to say something. Um, but the slides excuse me i can answer all questions at the end and you can also email questions directly to george and he'll help help me out with uh answering those questions um you may see a fan pop up maybe you know see my private summer so <laughs> just ignore that and we'll just go ahead and go with it um go to the next slide george thank you um, one thing that we're going to find out is this is a lot of information. I really gathered all this information together because I was going to all these networking events and everybody focused on a specific topic and they were experts on those topics. And then I felt like two, three weeks, months down the road, I wish I had heard something earlier. I had, wish I had known I should have done something earlier. So I put together this list when I was in a smaller networking group of all the things that should be considered. Um, when you are in the process of looking for a new job. And one of the things that popped up was from Marty Latman, where he says, it depends. And for Marty, all this information is going to be really good, but he kept saying, it depends. Will this apply to me? Should I do this? Should I do that? It depends. It depends. So there's a lot of information here. Take, take what you need from it. Um, discard the rest. Share it with somebody else. It works. Yeah, I'll say my other computer is making noise, so let me mute that. Okay, next question, next um, slide, please. Um, one of the good things about doing this this presentation and knowing all the things that you have to do means you will be prepared once you actually have the opportunity to sit down for your interview. And that's why I like this particular quote. It says, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So this is gonna give you a chance to actually prepare yourself in all different manners and aspects, and then be prepared to address the next item. Next slide, please. Being the project manager that I am, um, I broke this down into tasks. Um, you'll notice as a project plan, um, I did not put any durations in there. I just added the tasks because the durations will change based on where you are in, in your process. Um, it will also mean um, you may skip over. We're going to go over acknowledgement, regroup, assessment, financial assessments, um, organization tracking resumes, additional documents. Um, next. I think my the video froze in, in Facebook too, George. But next slide, please. Um, we'll Val Valerie, up. just give me just give me the slide number, just so I know we're on the right. So we're six, right? Six. Yep. Yes. But the video has me. You don't. Frozen. Oh, nope. There we go. Yeah. Don't okay. don't don't watch. The, uh, <laughs> don't I'll, watch myself. <laughs> yeah. Don't watch yourself. I'll I'll let you know when the uh, I'll let you know when the questions come in. Okay. I will no longer look to the right. Uh, we'll talk about branding, sample documents, job search sites training, preparation for interviews, stress reducers, and again, at the end, you will be hired. You will get there. So a little bit about my journey. If you go to the next slide, George. 
Slide number seven. Seven. <clears throat> so I was, if you can see by the three pictures, I was laid off three times. <laughs> the first one took me totally by surprise. I was called back into the office and then told that the company was declaring bankruptcy and was, I was out of a job on a Monday and I was, I was told on Monday I was out of a job on Wednesday. So that was a shocker. Um, the second one, I was knew it was coming and I was like, oh, okay, finally is here. But sometimes you build up, you know it's coming, you know it's coming, and you, sometimes you're just ready to get there. So you're like, whew, it's over. And then the very last one, um, the company was reducing the sizes and we knew it was coming. It was just a matter of time. Um, I was also really burned out. So when it came, I was like, woohoo, I'm out, I'm laid off. And everyone kept saying, are you joking? Are you serious? I'm like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> um, I was really grateful to get out. And sometimes being pushed out is a good thing. Um, slide eight, please. One of the things that you are gonna do though is as soon as you are out, or even if you know you're on your way out, is start to consider and think about your state of mind. Um, acknowledge your feelings. Uh, George and I were talking about this the other day too. Uh, there's five stages of grief. When you're in a job, you've worked there a long time. You've worked with people. Um, some you <clears throat> develop really close relationships with. So it really is stressful to leave a job behind. So look into the five stages of grief and how that will actually kind of guide you through it. But acknowledge all your feelings. I just say don't live in them. Uh, you don't want to become depressed and the next thing you know, you can't get past um, your anger and grief to move on to your next great thing. Um, I always... Once I did that, I sat down and I tried to think about who my support system was, who I could rely on, my family, my friends, some co-workers. Um, I started thinking about how I could regroup, what do I want to do, um, how can I really stay positive because when you're looking for a job, it is stressful, it's upsetting, um, it can be depressing. So you really want to actually try to figure out how I can stay positive um, because it will reflect in your voice when you're talking to people. You want to figure out how you can keep going, what will keep you going, what drives you. Uh, for me, what makes me laugh, that always makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, like my private summers here. Whew, I can't do no more, I can't do no more. So <laughs> just a little jokes, just things that's gonna make you laugh. Um, but most importantly, I say leave the house. If you stay in the house day after day after day after day and you're looking for a job, you will Put yourself in a state of depression um get up get dressed leave and we'll talk about that a little bit more but it really does help for you to leave the house and then you get to talk to other people you find people who are in your situation you share tips um it kind of boosts your your whole mentality so leaving the house is a really good option okay so that talks about our state of mind if you go to slide nine and just quickly go ahead and go to slide 10 george um, the next step is regrouping so I found this particular <laughs> um, picture. It says, all my life I wanted to be somebody. Now, who the hell was that? So some things that we actually do, um, we start on a path, and then we get kind of pigeonholed or comfortable in our situation. And then next thing you know, we're just kind of going along, going along, going along. And now we're out of a job. And we're like, but what do I do now? So... <laughs> Um, you really have to stop to think about it and figure out what you want to do. Um, if you go to slide 11, George, thank you. Um, I'd say take this time to regroup and rethink. Um, think about all those things you wanted to do when you were a kid. Sometimes that really helps make us take a step back. Um, it might be a great opportunity if you got laid off to start something new. So you always wanted to be X. Now you have time maybe to be X. Um, but when you're doing that, not only do you want to Think about what you wanted to be as a kid, but think about the things that you did in your job that you really liked, the things that you really did not like, the things that you really liked to do, and the things that you did not like to do. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be Pele, uh, so that did not happen. <laughs> There's a U.S. women's soccer team. They're, they're rocking and rolling, but that wasn't an option when I was younger. But, but there's no way for me to become a Pele at this age in my life. But there's things that I really like to do and that's what I'm trying to, I, I tried to focus on when I was um, out of work. Um, next slide. And you can skip right past the 
slide 12 and go to 13, George. Thank you. Because it just talks about um, our self-assessment. So how do we figure out what we want to be now that we are now adults and not kids and thinking that we want to be an astronaut and we're 50 years old? We can't do that. Um, unless you want to go to Elon Musk, he'll put you in, in space. So here's some things that you can do to actually do self-assessment and um, self-assessment and test to really figure out where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, where your interest lies. Um, there's all different links there that you can access to give you some information about how you can decide what might be an option for you moving forward. Um, and I say might because some of these things give you ideas and you're like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, one of the other things I ask is, you know, talk to some of your friends and your coworkers because they see things in you that you don't necessarily see in yourself. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I just did this. And it was like, no, you did so much more than that. And we may underestimate ourselves. So speak to other people um, and get their ideas of what you're doing. Um, sometimes you might have to take that with a grain of salt because sometimes people don't know exactly what you do. They may know your strengths. Um, I have a nephew. I think he, he kids gravitate to him. Like So from the time he was younger to his age now, um, all the nieces and nephews and cousins, they all gravitate toward him. I was like, you need to do something with kids. And he has no, no desire to do anything with kids. Um, so even if you get feedback from people, know that they may see something and you don't, um, and you may not want to actually follow through on, but that's one thing. So the next thing that you're going to do, slide 14 talks about our financial assessment and you can just go to slide 15, please, George. Um, the one thing I did is, uh, I sat down to look at my monthly expenses, everything that I was paying out, whether that was car, house, you know, um, movies, just everything that I would do, my photography, just everything. And then I started to figure out, okay, what can I do to try to reduce those expenses as much as I can? I call my cable. Do I really need all those channels? I'm not really watching them. And when you're looking for a job, that is a job. So you really still don't have time to watch TV. Um, so I did a lot of things like that. I looked at my savings. Um, I looked at my IRA, my, my 401. Um, I talked to my advisor, you know, can I take things in, uh, out? What will happen if I do? Things like that. Um, at the age that I was at, for me, I would have had some great penalties. You have to speak to somebody. I am not a tax advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. So take that with a grain of salt. Speak to someone who is and really find out um, what you can and cannot do. Uh, I was able to find ways to save money and use some of my savings to get me over the hump because I decided I didn't want to do exactly what I was doing before. And in order for me to actually go through the process, um, I took a lot of time and it took me longer to get a job than I expected. But that's again, because I took my time to figure it out and I really turned down some positions that to me would not have made me happy. And that's where I wanted to go in my next phase. So talk to a financial advisor okay next slide is our cover slide organization and tracking you can go to slide 17 george um one of the things that we have been or a lot of us have been full-time employees you know you have your nine to five 40 hours a week really 50 to 60 depending on what you know company you're at um one of the things that I had to reconsider is what would happen if I couldn't find a part a full-time job immediately, you know, and I need to have some money coming in. So can I look for a part-time job? People started talking about contracting positions. I didn't know anything about contracting positions. I had to learn about that. Um, do I want to own my own business? Do I want to work for a nonprofit organization, big company, small companies? These are all the things you want to actually look into. Um, one of the things that, um, David Shuckman does, he talks about owning your own business. You know, what can you do when you can't do what you're doing before or something like that? <laughs> Shout out to David. But one of the things that you want to sit down and, and really look at is all these different options. And there's pros and cons with every ink single option. Yes, a full-time job will get you there Monday through Friday. But as we all know, there is no guarantee that you will keep that job moving forward. Um, a part-time job may carry you over. You want to, again, talk to your financial advisor, not me. Um, you know, see if that might impact your unemployment. So you got to be careful about that. 
But some part-time jobs like Starbucks, uh, I think they're still doing this. If you're part-time, you can actually get insurance through them. And there's things that you may want to look into when you're looking at all these different items. Um, the contract position, some companies will hire you on and to the consultant company. So you're actually a employee of theirs and then they will put you into a contract with a different company other contracting companies you just contract when you when they have a contract you have a job you don't have a contract you don't have a job so those are you know pluses and minuses owning your own business you know how much money do you have how much support do you have so there's different things to look at um everyone seems to ask about getting into pharma i want to get into pharma and they think big pharma they always think of the you know the J and J's, the Bristol Myers, the just you know, Covance, the things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of smaller pharma companies out there, a lot of small smaller biotech companies that might be a little easier to get into. But also, every company needs somebody in IT and finance and marketing. Um, just because you don't actually work in that particular industry doesn't mean um, you can't submit a job, uh, submit your resume for that industry. Um, those are soft skills that can be trans and transferable skills from industry to in industry that you can focus on. That's something to look forward to. Um, if you go to slide 18, please, George. Um, I, I live by my calendar and I die by my calendar. <laughs> Even my friends know to ask me, uh, do you want to go do something? Did you check your calendar? Because I will double book myself because I try to say yes to everything. <laughs> I want to do everything in the world. So I do have to actually look at my calendar. Um, one of the things that I, I keep on my calendar are family events so I don't miss anything. Um, volunteering, I do volunteer uh, quite a bit. Every time I think I do this much, I end up doing this much. Um, but there are some links in the slides. So if you want to get out of the house so that you, you know, give yourself a break, um, volunteering also allows you to maybe use your skills to help somebody else. And that's something you can put on your resume. Um, there are some links there that you can utilize to find some of those um, networking or volunteering oper um, opportunities. There's also a link there to Alex Freund's networking group. He has a list of um, networking groups in the tri-states and sometimes even further. That list is really good because it allows you to get, again, get out of the house, meet like-minded people. And some of you will know that you get a job because you know somebody. Um, sometimes it's all about networking and somebody can give you an insight or a leg up to say, oh, this, I know this job is coming or they may be able to go to the hiring manager and say, hey, I know Bob and Bob is a great guy and this is what Bob, Bob can bring to the table and it'll give you a leg up. So try to go to those networking groups. You may want to go to a couple of them and see how they work out for you because some will, feel, you'll feel more comfortable in some, some you'll like more than others. So you just have to kind of fill out the group and go. You also have interviewing, um, I'm sorry, organizational industry meetings that you can attend. Some of them will be paid. Some of them will be free. Um, look in your local paper, any universities near you. I know Princeton, um, Ewing, Lawrenceville, they all have their own local papers that you can also check and they'll have uh, different things posted there as well. And then you can also um, keep your calendar handy and ready so when you have your interviews, you don't miss them. You don't wanna write something down or think it's on Tuesday at 11, it's really Monday at nine. So get a calendar and have that handy and ready for you. Slide 19. So this is a tracking spreadsheet. Um, this will be one of the documents I will give to Jerry so that he can share with you. Um, this is something that was required from unemployment. It also helps so that when you are submitting all of your resumes, you can track because what they'll do is they'll call you and say, this is Sandy and I'm calling you for the job you submitted your resume for. Now, if you are submitting one to three to five, 10 resumes a day, that doesn't help you at all. So you may have to dig and get a little bit of information out of Sandy, and this spreadsheet will allow you to find it a little faster, and you will have some of your information on there, where you found it, so on and so forth, who, who referred you, um, any notes that you may have. Slide 20. Within that spreading, that track sheet, tracking spreadsheet, <laughs> tongue twister there, 
I also kept information about the recruiters that I worked with. Um, I had three recruiters that I worked with. Um, people say, how many recruiters do you have? If you only have one, you don't have enough. If you work with that recruiter, and I'm sure some recruiters might might balk at that, but um, some recruiters are fo functioning or focused on certain industries um, or type of things. But if you only work with one, one person, um, consider that they are working with two, three, four, 500 people. You never know. Um, so it wouldn't be fair to you for you to only work with one person um, because you can't call that one person day every single day. But now you're a nag. <laughs> they really don't want to hear from the same person every day. Um, so my, my process was to work with three recruiters. I rotated calling them once a week. So it really is once every two weeks um, to see where they were, to find out what they had. Um, one of the things that um, Irene from cappuccino from the breakfast club talked about is if you help a recruiter so as a recruiter is there a position that you're struggling to fill i have a broad network because you're going to those networking meetings um and see if you can help them and if you can help them they might be able to help you a little bit better because they also get to know you better so have your different recruiters but i had my recruiters all listed um, i would rotate talking to them asking them for information trying to help them out um, and that helped me. Um, I tracked all training information. Uh, when I was looking for things, I was looking for training opportunities. Um, and that's how I, I tracked everything that I needed. Is also because I was interested in changing industries or looking to change industries and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And when I was looking for jobs, they said, oh, well, you need to be a scrum master or you needed to be this or you needed to be that so i started looking for training that will allow me to fill those roles or get those titles um, the other thing that i tracked is salary information one of the things you want to do is know, know your rate especially if you're going to do contract work you need to know and that's why at the beginning we were talking about financials like you need to know what you need to live off of in life and then you can break that down to an hourly daily weekly rate so that when you get a job opportunity, if somebody offers it to you and you can say, great job, but I can't live off of that. Or great job, I can't live off of that. But if I get a part-time job, then I can live off of that until I can maybe get promoted. So those are things you really want to consider with your salary. Um, in my list, I also have a couple salary calculators that you can use to help you figure that out. Um, uh, I also uh, Val, Val, I'm sorry, you're on 20. I just want, I just want to make sure you're on 20. Yes. I'm sorry, 21, right? No, 20. Oh, you're on 20. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Yep, just the, that third column over in 20, <laughs> the salary info. Okay. Thank you. And then um, the last column is travel. I kept a spreadsheet that actually talked about how um, – <laughs> Or step ahead of me, but that's okay. Stay on, stay on 21. That's fine. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry. It was my mistake. Okay. Um, the last column was travel. I kept a, a log of everywhere I went, every organization that I went, um, so that when people talked about what did you do, I can say, oh, well, I went to this, this networking group. I went to this um, trade show. I went to this industry meeting, so on and so forth. Um, within a year, I put over 2,000 miles of just going to different events and things. Um, again, talk to your finals financial advisor um, I was able to write those off on my taxes I don't think that's available now but talk to a tax person I am not a tax attorney I don't play on one on TV okay um, if you go to slide 21 um, there is a way for you to calculate um, your salary I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this but it gives you an idea of how you can figure out what your your rate is and to me, that was really, really, really important, and it should be for you because you don't want to take a job and then, you know, you have to get a part-time job um, unless, you know, that job is really interesting and it's going to open up other doors for you. So keep that in mind. I think that's available now, but talk to a tax Okay. Um, go to 22. We're talking about organization and tracking, and then you can um, – we finished that. So we want to talk about our resume on slide 23.
So Gary Landy always talks about the master resume, which is great. Um, the master resume has every job you ever had. Um, what we found, all of us who have spoken together, so if you're new to this, is every time you look at a particular job description, it kind of looks like your, your resume, but now you have to tweak it. And you're not tweaking it to put anything false or lies in there. You're tweaking it so that it focuses on the skills or the um, experiences that you have that will fit this new job. So if you have a huge master resume that have everything in a kitchen sink, so every job you ever had, um, everything you ever did, all your certificates, your education, your publications, badges, everything that you want um, on there, then you can tweak it so that it fits more into the particular job that you are moving forward with. Um, that makes it easier when you are, you know, creating a particular resume for a, a specific job. So one of the things I want to be very specific about, if I put two examples in there, um, one of my companies that I worked with, uh, being in pharma, um, our titles were application engineers. And then we were senior application engineers. Well, in the pharma industry, if you say AE, that means adverse event. And then when you say SAE, a serious adverse event. So acronyms are really good when you're in an industry. They can mean other things even within that same industry or trigger other ideas within that industry. So it's always really good to spell out any acronyms. Um, and when you're going across industry, acronyms can really also change a, a lot. So that's something you really should consider when you're doing that. But one of the things you can do within your resume when you're writing up that summary part, on the right-hand side, we have the volunteer groups, the Word Cloud apps. You can use those Word Cloud apps to take the job description and put it in the app and see what words pop up the most. And then you can tweak your summary so that includes those words a lot more um, and make your resume pop to the top of the pile in the applicant tracking system, which we'll talk about later. Okay. So those word cloud apps will allow you to tweak your resume, um, and make you more <clears throat> visible to the actual company. Okay. Slide 24, George is example of formatting. Everyone want ask, will ask you, what should my resume look like? It doesn't matter. Um, when you look at the slide, it's not meant for you to read. It's just so you can see. I know everything is really tiny. Um, but it really is to show you how different the, the actual format can look from resume to resume to resume. It doesn't matter when you're going to print that out and hand it to somebody. Um, you want it so it's clear and concise and easy to read. But again, it doesn't matter. Slide 25, George. Your formatting will matter when we talk about the applicant tracking system, the ATS. Now, um, the ATS is when you have all gone online and you say submit your resume online, right? And you upload your resume and then it goes helter skelter. Things go into the wrong columns and the wrong fields and things are missing all together. Well, that's because of these applicant tracking systems. There are approximately 200, according to Lynn Williams. Um, the, the slide I found, they said about 250. Um, but what they really do is they seem to take your, your system, your, your resume, and pull it in based on the formatting. And if the formatting is really pretty, um, things don't actually import into, this, into that form nicely. So you have to kind of trim it down some. But what also happens is they're looking for keywords. The keywords that were in the actual job description, that if you use that cloud app to update your summary, it will help to find you. So that's the whole reason behind having those, those cloud apps and tweaking your resume to get those keywords that are in the job description because in the applicant tracking system, they're looking for project manager, safe, scrum, agile. They're looking for those keywords and anybody who's in project management know what I'm talking about. If you don't know those words, don't worry about it. You don't need it. But that's what those applicant tracking systems are looking for. So that's one of the things we want to focus on. If you go to the next slide, 26, it just talks about all the different tra applicant tracking systems. 
Um, one of the biggest things I, I got when I, <laughs> they hurt my feelings when I, when I got this slide or found this particular page. So 75% of resumes will never be seen by human eyes. Now we spent hours tracking and tweaking and looking for jobs and making our, our, our resume look pretty and getting all that information in there and nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> that's really distressing. But again, that's when you go back to tweaking your resume, getting those keywords into your summary and into your description so that you will pop to the top of the top of the, the list so that you're on that 25% curve. Um, if you go to the next slide, 27, we're going to skip over that one. You can read that one later just because it's hard to see. And we're going to go to 28. The things that you do not want to do when you create your resume to upload into the applicant tracking system. So you're going to have two resumes, one real pretty, bullets, lines, colors, whatever you want. And then you're going to take that same resume and strip it down so that it has the bare minimum. So one of the things you don't want to do, you don't want to have any lines, any tables, um, images. And these are things that I pulled off of the internet, the things not to do. And they were some of the things that uh, Lynn Williams told us. See, this is why you go to networking groups because you pick up new things. Um, you don't want to use headers and footers. It, it really should be saved as a Word document, not a PDF, because sometimes those tracking systems won't be able to read it. Um, one of the big, big things there is hiding text in white. So there was someone who said, because the ATS system is looking for keywords, people would put those keywords in white text and hide it so that they will pop up higher in the applicant tracking system. However, now the systems will convert those to black so that now the applicant tracking system can see like maybe at the bottom on the page in a, in a, a paragraph there, you wrote ad jobs from master, blah, blah, blah. Not in a sentence, just words <laughs> that you've hidden. And now we can see it. So now they see you're trying to cheat the system. So you don't want to do that. You really want to, if you are a Scrum Master, if you have Agile experience, you want to use that terminology in your summary or throughout your resume in a visible area, not hidden, so that it's visible um, to not only the tracking system legitimately, but it also does um, help ping you when it is looking for those keywords. You also don't want text any smaller than 11 points. So if you go to slide 29, one of the things you're also going to do, um, or 20, 29 talks about all the things you should do. You want to go ahead and use certain type of fonts. We've listed the fonts there. Um, use a formal selection heading. So when you look at your, your formatting in, in Word, you have all these different features. Um, use a chronological format, use full dates, month and year, um, and be consistent when you do that. One of the reasons why, if you are looking or you have an international opportunity, you want to make sure people understand exactly what you were doing when you were doing it. Um, and internationally, sometimes the month and day are swapped. So write that out as best you can as well. Um, and when you have any type of keywords, you want to write things out in BA. Again, acronyms can mean something different. And one of the things that – George, you're about to say something? No, I'm sorry. I just – I was answering someone on my phone. Nope. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you want to save it as a Word doc or text file. Um, that is something that the tracking systems can read and upload easily. Um, if you save it as a text file, it will reduce the amount of formatting a little bit more in your, your actual document. And you use American spelling of words. So that's our ATS system. So slide 30, it's just our title slide. Talks about the resume. Now we have additional documents. So one of the things I learned, my family has no idea what I do. <laughs> so anything they say is like, I know you work in IT. That's about all they can tell me. And they wanted to help me find a new job. 
what I needed to do was to put together something to explain to them what I did and then they could keep an eye out for me because people want to help you. They really do. Your hairdresser, your um, your barber, your next door neighbor, people want to help, but you have to help them help you. So one of the documents that we talk about is called a professional summary. And that is the one that's in the upper right hand corner. And it, it really is. I know you can't see it, but again, you'll get an example of this document with all the other things I send out to you. But what it will provide is an overview of what you do, what you're looking for, a little bit of a summary, a uh, few bullet points of what you're going to do or uh, what your key skills are. And you can also put in there um, companies that you're interested in. And you hand that to a friend or a coworker or somebody you're networking with. It's not a resume. It's something quick and easy for them to read, try to understand, and get a feel for what you're looking for. And then they can even share that with somebody else. But it's a quick document to help them help you. Um, you have your cover letter. Again, that really depends on who you talk to. People say, is a cover letter really necessary nowadays? If they ask for it, yes, it is. Um, if you want to provide a cover letter, that's good. If you are, hint, hint, using an applicant tracking system and they says upload your resume and you still want to include your cover letter put your cover letter as the last page because if you upload it and there's a pdf version of it or a word version and they open it and the first thing they see is a cover letter the thing they might say this person doesn't listen we asked them for a resume and i see a cover letter they may not get the page two to see the resume so put the cover letter at the end and wrap it up in a bow basically but create a cover letter, it never hurts. The T letter, that's the third document that you see on the screen, where what you're doing is, and this may or may not depend on who you are. See, Marty, it depends. Depends on who you are. It could replace your cover letter. So instead of sending the cover letter format that you see um, on the left side, um, you want to use the T letter that's at the bottom where you take the actual job description and that will go on the left hand side of the table and then on the right hand side of the table you put down all your skills that will speak to what that company needs and that's your t-letter um, that's really helpful and quick and easy for them to say oh well i said i need this and they can do that and this is how they accomplished it so it is it can be a really easy thing for um, employers to use Another thing you want to have is a thank you letter ready to go, um, copy of your presentations and publications if you have those. If you've written a book, um, I will say also get a list of your own interview questions that you may have. Uh, if you go in there and they say, do you have any questions, and you say no, mm, doesn't look really good. It means like you're not interested, you could care less, maybe you don't really want the job. So have at least a dozen questions. Um, they may answer them and you can say, oh, well, I have this question, but you already answered that for me. So they can at least know that you had thought about it and then they've already answered it. So then they make they make it makes them feel good that, you know, here here I am answering or asking questions that are relevant. OK, um, and be ready for those standard interview questions. You know, what have you been doing? <laughs> because, you know, we're out of work. We're, we're sitting around eating bonbons, right? So that goes back to that spreadsheet where you were keeping a list of all the things that you were doing. You can talk about it. So one of the things that I interviewed with someone and I was able to tell him, I was like, oh, well, I do this. I do that. I do a lot of networking. Oh, what groups do you do? And I listed the breakfast club and lo and behold, he had been a member of the breakfast club. So list those things. Talk about those things. Um, there are people out there who have been where you are, who are now in a hiring position who will understand that you've been networking and working at all these different events. Okay, slide 32. One of the other things I also kept, um, but in a Word document was a list of all this other information. Um, sometimes when you are looking at all these sites, they will ask you to enter your address, enter this, enter that. Um, it becomes really redundant. And the last thing you wanna do is mistype something. <laughs> So copy and paste. So if you already have it in a Word document, all you have to do is copy and paste it from your Word document into their, their online form and boom, you're done. It helps to have all that information available as well. Um, sometimes they don't ask for that information when you are submitting a 
your resume online. But when you get on an interview, they may pop up some of these questions and you don't want to stumble upon it. Like when, what, when did you graduate or what is your degree or what is this or what is your salary requirements? You want to have that information ready and available. So it's always nice to have that done and in your um, back pocket somewhere. Okay. Um, the previous company information is always good since I never remember the dates and, and times and <laughs> certainly a manager's last name. You remember Bob and Jerry and Joan, but sometimes you just blank out on their last name. So if, good to have that information keyed in. Okay, slide 33 is just telling you we finished with our additional documents. And then what we want to do is move into our branding. Alex talks about branding a lot um, in the elevator speech. The elevator speech is really important in terms of how can I explain to someone that I just met very quickly who I am, what I do. Uh, you don't want to ramble. So there, if you look over to the right-hand side, you have all the don'ts. And you, you want to keep it short. Um, pay attention to body language because you can see it when you start losing people. You know, their eyes start glazing over. And I'm online on slide 34. Yep, thanks. Yep. Thanks, George. Um, you don't want to keep going on and on and on and on and on, how long you work for the company, how wonderful you are, how much you did for them. Um, as Alex said, they don't really care. <laughs> they want to know what you can do for them. So if you can say, I did this for, you know, XYZ company, and I can translate that and how I can, and then translate that and what you can do for them, that's great. But you don't want to talk about how great you are. You want to talk about how much your skills can be utilized by this new company. Um, one of the things I always do, and if you see me at the breakfast club before I start speaking, I try to smile. Um, and you should do that even when you're on the phone. And that helps to relax me when I smile a little, little bit. And it puts that other person at ease. Nobody wants to talk to somebody who's like, like, you know, face all scrunched up and looking very upset or, or angry. So smiling puts you at ease and it puts them at ease. Um, I'm probably talking a little fast. <laughs> I'm trying to slow myself down. Um, but you want to make sure you're, you're speaking not too fast, not too slow. Um, I have a friend who has a, you know, a drawl and he takes his time when he speaks. And I said, you know, you need to let people know that you speak that way that um, because they may consider that as like, oh, they really don't care or they can't they don't understand what they're what they're saying or what they want to say. Um, if you talk fast, let people know. Sometimes I talk fast, I talk with my hands, you know, and pay attention to those signs where they're like, they're, they're looking at your hands flying all over the place instead of looking at you in the, in the eye. Uh, because you don't know how long you will have with someone, um, Alex suggested that we have different lengths. Um, so be prepared to speak to people at different lengths. It might be in an elevator, you might have a couple minutes at a cocktail party, who knows. Um, we do a lot of name triggers. I I'm getting away from saying Vanessa Williams instead of Valerie Williams because somebody keeps calling me Vanessa. <laughs> I will answer. But when they are looking for me to hire me, I want them to hire Valerie S. Williams, not Vanessa. But if you can do name tours, it will help people to remember you if you put a little joke in there. Okay. Slide 35. The other thing that you're going to do for branding is an email branding. Please, please, please do not have something um, that says princess at AOL.com or John's dad or best baseball person in the world. Anything like that. It's not professional. It's not um, easy to find when somebody's looking for you and they can't rem um, remember your full name. They might know John, but they're not going to know you as, you know, Barry's dad or something like that. So you want to make sure when you create a email that is professional, um, now AOL and Prodigy are considered antiquated. Even Hotmail is now lo no longer a good email address to use. So you want to lean towards Gmail, um, Yahoo. If you use like your Comcast or Verizon email, that's fine. Just recall, just be um, cautious if you happen to switch because you're trying to save money. Um, if you try to switch from one uh, package to another, when you do that, you lose that email and you can lose all your contacts. So if you're going to switch providers, make sure you download all your contacts at the very least, get all your pertinent information out of that provider's email address before you move to another one if you're trying to save money. Or you can also download all of those 
a, um, contacts from that provider and upload them into like a Gmail account or something. But make sure you don't lose all your information. Um, but you want to make sure you have something professional. Um, try to avoid putting anything in there with your that might allude to your age, like your, um, your date of birth, or I should say the year of your birth, like Jane 1965. Um, ageism does exist. We'll talk about that later. Um, but if you also have something like a personal website, uh, include that in there with your branding. Um, that goes a long way. It shows all the things you, you can do. If you go to um, slide 36 there, George, you'll see that um, with your personal branding, you can take that into your business cards. And if you don't have a business card, uh, if you look over to the right-hand side, there's a list of different places you can get business cards. They can be very simple. They can be very um, elaborate. So it can go from, you know, like 10 bucks or 20 bucks to up to 50, depending on what you get. And one of the things you want to do is put all the relevant information on there. At one point, I had my home and my mobile on, on my card. People suggested, like, well, which one should I really call you at? Um, I decided on my mobile. That way, even if I'm traveling or I'm somewhere at a networking event, I can still get my messages and I can still get um, at least see people are calling me. And one of the things I also did, um, I leveraged this from someone else, is on the back of my card, I now put on that card. It said meet, met on location event. If you're doing a lot of networking, you get a lot of business cards, you kind of forget where you met people. So it helps that if you can write down you know, if they can write down or you can write down where you met them at, and then it triggers that in your mind. Oh, yes, I remember talking to them at the Breakfast Club at PSG of Mercer County, at PSG um, Central New Jersey, or wherever it is you met them. I also put on the bottom just some keywords to say, this is what I am. You know, I'm an advocate, I'm a mentor, I'm a, I'm a leader, things like that. Just trigger so people can remember me. I also then copied the left hand side of my business card and made a lanyard and put that so that I can continue my branding into a name name tag. Now we go a lot of places and every time we go somewhere that somebody has you write down your name and you stick it to your shirt and then half the time it falls off because you're like talking and moving and whatever. But if you make up your own badge and that's something you can pick out and, and pin to your your shirt or jacket and it carries through as your branding all the way through. It's easy to read. If you write like me you want something that's easy to read. Okay. Slide 37 is as you continue on with your branding, especially when you're on LinkedIn, you need to have a profile. And when you have a profile with LinkedIn, you have to have a picture for it to be considered a full profile. Now, the ones that are underneath where it says profile pictures that look all pretty and you're in a group and you have that, that kid or, or whatever, those are the pictures you do not want on LinkedIn. OK, so unless you're modeling, unless you are that little kid, um, unless you're BB King and music is your industry, um, you really don't want to gear towards those type of pictures. Never do a group shot because who's Terry? <laughs> you know, if you're, you know, people look at the picture and they're like, well, which one is she? Which one is he? So you don't want those those group shots. And unless you're in an industry that is alcohol related, you definitely don't want a group shot with alcohol in it. So do what you want, but I would suggest doing the ones on the right-hand side where they're nice crisp shots. Remember in LinkedIn, you're really going to see from the shoulders up most of the time. Um, if it's too far back, they can't really see your, your face. But notice all the pictures I picked on the right-hand side, they're, they're all smiling. Um, they're clear. The lighting is really good. Those are things you really want to focus on. In the bottom, there's this website called Photo Filter Feeler. You can actually post two different pictures and let people um, give you feedback on them and let you know if they like them or not or which one makes you look more appealing or, or whatever. So that's an option that you can do. You go to the next slide. Slide 38. I am not putting this up because I'm narcissistic. Really, it comes down to I used to have long hair. And then once I cut my hair, um, my friends were like, when are you going to update your profile picture? When are you going to update your profile picture? And I would literally walk into a room and people would do a double take. And 
yeah, there's a difference between my hair being longer and me being shorter. To me, I look the same, but other people thought it was a big enough difference that I should update my profile picture. I say that so that when you are posting a profile picture, do not put one up that's 20 years old. Um, if you are a woman and went to a wedding and you were all guzzied up and have all the makeup, as you can see, I don't wear a lot, a lot of makeup. Oh, I have those same earrings on. <laughs> Obviously, these are my favorite. Um, but if you're not wearing, a, if you don't normally wear a lot of makeup and you put one on, sometimes we can look like different people based on the amount of makeup we have on. So you want to really put something that's true to form to your everyday life. Um, you definitely want to look a little bit better, but you don't want to go overboard. Okay. So slide 39 talks about our branding is over sample documents. When I talk about sample documents, sometimes you will go and I've heard this mostly from marketing people where they have been asked to provide an example of their work. So they're given an opportunity to come up with a marketing plan for A, B or C and they have to put it in project or Microsoft. Um, Visio or PowerPoint and Excel and they do all these different things or even create a marketing plan and their question was should I really do this and if it's required for the job then that's up to you again it depends you have to do what you feel comfortable with but what you can do is create maybe a sample version of it and then you can have it to show as your work and keep it a little high level or create an example of like everybody has bought a house or something like that. Um, this is what I do to promote a house, buying a house, selling a house, building a house, whatever it may be. And that gives them an idea of what you can do. If they ask for something that's specific to their industry or their issue that they would like you to come in and resolve and you build something for them and they take that and don't hire you and use it, that's not a company you want to work for. My personal opinion. Um, but you may be asked to provide sample documents. If you have a version already ready to go, you can hand it over or it might be easier to tweak. I know some of those things take um, hours, if not days to create. Uh, so you really want to consider what you want to do in creating sample documents. Okay, slide 40, 41 is job search sites. Um, slide 42 talks about social media and some of those social media sites can be used for job searching. LinkedIn is at the top of that list because there are people posting and hiring based on LinkedIn job descriptions and or LinkedIn profiles. If you are in an industry where they're cutting edge or they do social media and then boom, 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 things are really moving swiftly. Um, Twitter, if they use Twitter, they definitely actually post jobs on their Twitter site and you can leverage that. Um, Instagram, Facebook, even meetup.com, you can find jobs out there. Uh, you can also find them on YouTube and or you can use YouTube to share what you've seen. It can also be used against you. <laughs> so whatever you post out there, be ready to stand behind. You, We have all seen how people have lost their jobs based on what they have put on social media. So be careful about those. Um, you can get ideas on some of the ones on the right, the YouTube, Pinterest, Google Plus, Flickr, Share, Slide Share. Um, those are applications we're not going to really go over, but you can see on my Word document that I'm going to give you a list of and a little description of what each of those are. Okay. Next slide, 43. It also talks about the joys and pitfalls of social media. I also have a little wheel on there and in the upper right hand corner, there is a link to that wheel. So you, you can actually read it because <laughs> it, is, it is really little, but based on your industry, it will make a suggestion of the actual social media sites that might be beneficial to you. So that's a good resource for you. And so the next slide is 44 and then we're going to just go ahead and move on to 45. People always talk about training and personal development. You know, should I do training? Should I not do training? Again, it depends. Um, look to your unemployment office or even other federal grants to see if you can get training for a specific job. Um, if, like when I needed training, or I needed training because one of a couple of jobs I was looking for kept requiring agile. I didn't have agile experience. 
I didn't have money to go get an agile certification. So I talked to someone at unemployment and they gave me a name of someone for a federal grant and I had to go through this class and talk to them about the process and why I wanted to do it. On top of that, I had to show them why I needed that, that certification. And because I was tracking those jobs on my tracking spreadsheet, I said, here are the five jobs that I could have gotten or at least submitted my resume for had I had the certification. So they may ask you, well, why do you need that certification? You already have a PMP. Why do you need an agile scrum master certification? Well, see these five jobs? Well, if I had that, I could have actually put my resume in. I would have been working already. This little picture here, I don't know if you've seen this actual commercial. Um, it's for University of Phoenix, but it talks about training personal development. And one of the things is like you may be doing your job, something else may come in. And in this particular example, it's brain and technology to replace people. And as they go through, they eventually, you know, they start out with a bigger shop, then they go to a little shop, and then finally the woman is the last one to actually get laid off. So you want to go ahead and do your get, get your training. Um, if you go to the next slide, 46, um, you will see all the different places you can get training, um, either through the through the library, um, through web websites, um, through your networking groups. Anything highlighted with a little star, those are paid training sites. Uh, again, you have to look at your own finances. That's why I said if you understand where your finances are, you'll know whether or not you can get some of this information. Um, I know lynda.com, that is paid is no longer grandfathered in or it's no longer available through LinkedIn. Um, it is grandfathered in if you had a LinkedIn account, but it's still a professional LinkedIn account. Um, you can actually get that at Princeton Library. It's no longer available at Mercer County Library. And that was as of six months ago. I haven't looked again to see if they still have it, but ask your library if they offer lynda.com. If you are working, ask your job if they're offering lynda.com. On lynda.com, just like YouTube, you can do a search for Agile certification, and they actually have training materials out there for Agile certification. Now, you need to make sure you're looking at the right version. You need to sometimes take that with a grain of salt. You need to follow that up with other training and learning um, materials, but at least it'll get you started. And that's something you can also put on your resume. It's also something you can talk about during your interview. It's something you can talk about when you're, you know, at a networking event. Oh, yes. Well, what have you been doing? Oh, well, I've been doing this. And I've also been doing some training on blah, blah, blah site. And this is how it's going. So training is really good no matter what. As you know, George does a lot of AI training um, and personal development and has leveraged that into a monthly meeting every January at the Breakfast Club where we get a lot of great information from him. It, training is important. Keep it going. Uh, at the top of this, I listed um, get a library card. So again, if you're watching your finances, the library is a great place for resources. Um, They're always willing to help. You can get books, download books. You can also suggest books. Uh, I go to elibrary.com elibrarynj.com and I can download audiobooks. So if you like to listen to audiobooks, instead of going to Audible and having a, another bill, try to get them. Of course, it's, they only have what they have, whereas Audible is whatever you pay for. Um, so there are some drawbacks, but there are some opportunities there. Okay. Um, go to the next slide, slide 47. We talked about our training. Now we have our interview prep. So you did all that work, you're all ready, you're ready to get to your interview. It will happen, I promise it will happen. Um, one of the things you wanna do is have copies of your resume. Um, I did have a interview where they literally were walking me down the, you know, um, to the conference room and they just pulled somebody in from, from his desk. The man had never seen my resume, <laughs> didn't know what was going on. Um, so I had a panel of three only two knew, you know, what the job was and had read my resume, but I gave them all copies of my resume, the one that I tweaked for that particular job. The guy who was pulled in um, sat there and read my resume while 
they started the interview process. So have a copy of your resume, the T letter as well. I wish I had a T letter for that particular interview. So that would have helped the guy that they pulled in randomly. Um, again, you want to go ahead and learn everything you can about the company and know you have your questions. Um, for me, I told George, I changed my outfit this morning. So I had something picked out last night. I changed it again this morning. Um, as you as you can tell, I lean towards red. Red is my color. I like red. I feel comfortable in red. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy. So I always wear something red if I can to an interview. However, someone gave me a tip that maybe you can wear the color of the company you're interviewing for, and then that gives a subliminal message. I don't know if it works, but it was a good tip. I thought it was interesting. Um, if you can, uh, try to map out your your drive so you know where you're going, especially if it's somewhere new that you haven't been to before, and then gauge that based on the time of day that you have to, um, the, the time of day that your interview is scheduled for. So you have to take in, you know, traffic into account. And body language practice. I'm, I have a tendency to move a lot. And when I was in an interview, I, I, and this was a long time ago, um, I was hired and later I became friends with the hiring manager and he said, you know, I noticed that, you know, you move around a lot. And I said, okay, so what's the big deal? He said, well, you did that in your interview. And I thought you were very nervous. And I was like, no, I wasn't nervous. I was fine. But he said, it, for him, it looked like I was nervous because I was constantly moving. And that's my, my MO. I constantly move. So practice your body language if you can, as well as your interviewing skills. Um, slide 49. One of the other things you want to make sure you do, please, please, please turn off your phone. If you can't um, turn it off, leave it in the car. But one, having a phone on and and ringing in the middle of an interview says you are not paying attention, you don't really care, um, is really disruptive. It's okay, not for us, but it's okay if the interviewee or interviewer has their phone on and it rings. So you can say, and then you can sit there and just look at them nicely and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to act like you're not, you know, ignoring me right now, but you don't want your phone going off. Um, but having a phone in the room with you and it's a smartphone will show that you're up to date with technology. Uh, we just got my mom into a smartphone. She let go of her flip phone and had the full keyboard, but she liked it because it had the full keyboard and she only uses her phone for emergencies. So <laughs> that was enough for her. But if you go into an interview with a phone on or and or a flip phone, that's probably going to end really quickly. Um, one of the things that you can do to help relax yourself because, you know, it's an interview. It's always a little stressful when you go to an interview. It's a power pose. And Amy Cuddy talks about this. And the power pose is meant to give you a, a leg up. You know, when you stand up like that and you have your arms out, it makes you feel better and powerful and, and it helps relax the nerves. Um, my thing is, do not do that in a parking lot. Um, I realized I was doing it outside of my car before I went and I looked up, I was like, you have all these windows. What if your hire <laughs> manager is looking out the window seeing you doing this power pose? So if you can get in there and go to the ladies' room, men's room, do the power pose in a stall and kind of boost yourself up, that, you know, that'll work. Um, absolutely, Abby. Um, cohort, she talks about being absolutely qualified. So if you look at that, you will um, see what she's referring to. There's a link in, in here as well. Um, ageism exists, sexism, um, racism, it all exists. It does happen. Um, but if you go in there knowing you're absolutely qualified and you hold yourself in a manner that says, I know what I'm doing and I can help you get to where you need to be. It will help you. Um, and then you can talk about how, yes, I might be a little bit more seasoned, but that means I can actually answer your questions a lot faster. So those are things that you want to go ahead and do. <clears throat> when you go to your interview, know that you're prepared. You've done everything that you can. And then most importantly, be yourself because people are really going to hire you not just based on your skills, but they want to hire somebody they think they can work with somebody that they feel comfortable with. And that will go a long way. Um, go to the next slide, 50. Now, as we are here, um, because of the coronavirus, 
we decided not to meet. However, one of the things that people are also trying to look for, they are also, the companies are trying to cut costs. So they're doing a lot more video calls and conferencing calls, and that can be really, really, really stressful. <clears throat> um, one of the things you want to make sure that when you're doing a video call, um, try to get Skype and Zoom set up and do a practice with your friends so you can work on different things, like what does your background look like? Uh, I need to work on my background a little bit more, but right now what you see behind me is just a, a shower curtain that I, I got from some store. It, it didn't cost me less than five bucks, and it was on sale. I strung it up behind me uh, because, <clears throat> not that I have a, well, I do have a messy office, but that's different. But I have a bookshelf back there. My bookshelf isn't nice. You know, when you look at people online um, and they're doing interviews in their offices, they have these nice big bookshelves and pictures and never. My bookshelf doesn't look like that. Um, if it if it looks really nice and clean, unlike the picture in the bottom left hand corner, then yes, you can show your background. Um, but you don't want people to get distracted by what's behind you while they're interviewing you. Um, so I, I put up that just to kind of help out a little bit. One of the other things you want to make sure your kids, your dogs, your neighbors. I actually put a note on the front and back of my door of my house because I know they're walking around doing um, the census. I'm asking them, do not disturb, so that we're on this call, that I don't have anybody knocking on the door. Inevitably, every time I'm on a call, my stepdad comes by. <laughs> I don't know how he times it. I could be sitting here all day doing nothing. As soon as I get on a phone call, he will pop by. So I put a note on the door on the back for him, too. Um, so you want to make sure you keep your distractions down. Um, check with, your again, your local library. Sometimes they have small rooms that you can go into and actually have a conference call or an interview. Um, one of the other things you want to make sure you have good lighting. You have that bad and not so bad. Um, I'm going to take this down for a sec, so it might be a little hard. But see this little ring? So I got this at five and below. It clips onto my computer, and it clips right around my uh, camera itself so that it puts gut pretty good lighting on my face. And then George and I played around with a couple different things based on my house. I have a window open. He told me to turn off the light above my head. I turned off a different light. So we, we played around until the lighting looks pretty good. Um, but you want to make sure that you have good lighting. Uh, somebody should, if they're going to do a video interview with you, they should be able to see you. And it should not look like you're in a horror movie. The other thing you have to be aware of is how you're dressed. So I love this commercial it, I, all the way over to the right where the guy was sick and he got up and he sneezed and then next you know he dropped his laptop and you saw he didn't have anything on. So that kind of happened to me before where I was sick. I was laid off. I was home. I was sick. I signed up for some training. I said, well, I can just go sit on training. It's not like I'm doing anything, you know. I, so I got in my robe. I come downstairs. I'm looking a mess. I turn on my computer. It automatically turned on the video for the computer. And I was like, ah! So um, I quickly turned, a vi turned that video off. So I was really caught by surprise. Uh, so be careful about that with your, your computers. I used to have this little piece of tape, you know, the, the blue masking tape that you use for, for painting. I rolled it over a couple times, and then I put the sticky part above the camera. Don't put it on the camera because then it makes your, your camera all, all gunky. And then I, I covered it up so that it would no longer happen to me. If I joined a meeting that automatically had the video enabled um, so they wouldn't see how crazy I might look if I was sick or something. So keep that in mind when you're joining calls. All right. Um, slide 51 is stress reducers. We're coming to the end. We're wrapping up. And slide 52 shows all the different ways you can reduce your stress or try to reduce your stress. Looking for a job is stressful. There's no doubt about it. Find a way to release some of that stress. Again, leave the house. Um, if you have a hobby, you like to run, you like to do yoga. Um, I like to say that I look like those three guys doing yoga, not like the one with the yellow top on. <laughs> I don't do yoga well. If you like to dance, um, go to the movies. There's a lot of free things out there. Um, if you go to Groupon.com, up in the upper left-hand corner there, uh, you can find some reduced rates for things. It will allow you to get out of the house and do, do certain things that maybe you would not have had the opportunity to do before. Um, it still may cost you something. 
if you go to meetup.com, that's in the bottom right, um, there are things on there that are free, and there are things that are there that they advertise that are um, that will have a cost associated with it. But you can say if you like to hike, you can type in hiking, and they will give you all the different events on different days that are associated with hiking. I usually look for photography. That's my stress reducer. So I find photography groups that would say, we're going to meet up here and go take pictures on the wildlife preserve. And it doesn't cost me anything. And then there are some that will say, we're going to go do photography here, and it's going to cost you 150 bucks to join. So it's, you know, it's a mixed bag out there. Um, but you can find a lot of things out there that will allow you to get out of the house and reduce your stress, maybe have a laugh, um, meet some people who are like-minded. You may meet a contact who says, oh, you do this, blah, 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 blah. I actually went to a photography group, met a woman that I was sitting next to who happened to work for a company in Philly. Um, I didn't end up working with her, but I did interview with a friend of hers. See how this works? So networking. I interviewed with a friend of hers at a different company. Um, it didn't quite work out, but I got the interview, and I got the interview because I was networking, even though I was networking at a photography event, nothing job related. Keep that in mind. Of course, the phone is gonna ring. I thought I turned the ringer off. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. And then the last thing is, and it's spam. Okay, I'll just turn it off. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one, 50, 54. You are now hired. Okay. So keep knocking, keep trying. You will get there. I promise you will. We have all been there. And oh, we're on slide 54. There we go. Yep. yep. So that's just my little comment to say that we're, we're hired. And if you go to just the last one, it's, it just has my contact information so you can reach out um, and reach out to me and ask me any questions that you like. Um, George, I'm going to pull over the Facebook window and see if there's any questions out there that I can answer. Yeah, and for those, yeah, that, for those, for those that are those late, are late. Um, I want to show two uh, two links for everybody. I'm gonna uh, I'll paste them again down in the bottom. Uh, and I just found these. So uh, for those who don't know uh, about these sites, hang on. So this first one is really good. Um, it talks about 102 behavioral questions. It's pretty self-explanatory. And as you go through this, it chunks them into categories. So it talks about teamwork. It talks about um, client interaction. It talks about just to show you adaptability, uh, time management skills. So these are potentially like the default questions or the, the base questions that you could be answered. It's a, it's kind of a good review. It's, it's um, well worth your time. The other one that I found that I think has been really interesting, there's this gentleman that was an ex-Google recruiter. And I found this just literally, I think, on Thursday, to be, to be perfectly honest. And hang on, let me just paste this up here so everyone can see it and I'll paste it into the channel as well um, and I got to turn this guy off so it doesn't echo um, basically what this gentleman has is a series of 10 minute videos and it's the um, hang on, why is this not working there you go and uh, his name is um, Jeff H. Sipe that's his channel name and it has uh, a series of 10 minute um just, you know, how do you approach uh, answering these questions? What should you be thinking about? Something use the STAR uh, uh, structure to answer a question, which is situation, um, situation tasks, activities, or no, a situation ac action activities. Wait, situation T, I forget what the T is. Um, of course, I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. Actions and result. And he goes through and explains it. So I think those two links, if you can look through them, are, are well worth your time. So now we've got questions for Valerie. And I know we're on a 20 second delay. So if you can type them in, it's probably going to be easier than um, any other option that we have available. <laughs> That's the only option we have available. Well, I'm seeing a couple things about paying it forward. So 
I definitely agree. This was something that, and I'm going to give um, David Shuckman all the <laughs> all the credit for encouraging me <laughs> to do this. Um, it really came out of, like I said, a smaller networking group, and this has grown and grown and grown. Um, this is all the information that I've heard from listening to all the experts to talk about each of these topics. So when you look at the networking groups, you'll see each of these topics pop up and new ones that I didn't even get a chance to talk about. So yes, if you can pay it forward, continue to go to the networking groups even after you get a position um, because you don't know when your next position is going to come from or if you're going to be able to help someone. So. And Joseph Starr. Situation. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Uh, again, I, I drew a blank. And, and, and T, they use a different one, too. It's uh, I've seen two different uh, uh, descriptions, descriptions for the T. I forget what the other one is. A target, I think it was. I think it was situation. What was the situation? What was the target thing? Because for some people, the actions and the, um, and the tasks can be similar. I think it was target. So what was the situation? What was your target goal? What actions did you have? And then what were the results? So that, that seems to be the, um, the preferred um, um, mechanism, especially at Google, where if you can get into that, um, into that thinking, supposedly what you're doing is it, it's going to uh, give them the depth that they're looking for so that don't, they don't ask follow-up questions. So... And it's, and it's explained in those videos on the YouTube link. So uh, the guy's got some good stuff. So Valor, any final words? I'm just scrolling up to see if I, I miss anything. Uh, the, T, the T letter, just so uh, somebody had asked, I saw the, something on the T letter. The general idea behind the T letter is you, you basically make a T on the page. And on the left hand, it doesn't really matter, but on one side of the T, you put down all of the different um, activities or, or things that are being asked for on the resume. And on the right hand side, you put how your qualifications match up to each of those pieces. So basically what you're doing is you're kind of helping them along to say, here's how my resume really does align with um, the requirements of the job rec. So that's, that's basically what a T letter is. And yeah, Joseph has uh, just said there, you know, I, I think several companies are using this. I believe Amazon's doing it as well. Um, but yeah, it, it, I find the more I'm listening to it and the more I'm, I'm listening to um, examples of it, the, uh, the star approach or learning how to use the star approach to answer questions is some, is a skill worth, um, worth acquiring. And, and the other thing I would tell you to, to, to do, by the way, as, as, and it may, may be obvious, maybe it's not, um, create your own Word document. Val, you might want to add this to, the, to your list. The other thing that's coming out of at least my personal research, uh, create your own, uh, and I don't care what, what you use, Word, I'm using OneNote at the moment. Um, create your, take those interview questions, those 102, and script out what your answer is. So instead of waiting for the interview to actually answer those, you want to answer those proactively. And then you can then rehearse those so that when you're asked that question, you're going to know what your talking points are. So again, you don't necessarily want to be what we'll use the word rehearsed, but you want it to be so um, uh, uh, defined for yourself that it just becomes natural when you say it. So that's what we got. So I'm glad everyone enjoyed this. I'm glad this went well. Um, it seemed to work quite well. So, you know, it's if if, uh, if they continue to keep us all in a quote-unquote quarantine, we can do this again next month. It's uh, pretty straightforward to do. Okay. Valerie, anything else? I'm just trying to scroll through, see if I miss anything else. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. It seemed that this, uh, everything here worked well. Oh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Adrian, there was about, I don't know what the max was because I know I have a, a session open just to track it. I know Valerie had one. So I'm guessing we were in the 30, 38 to 40 range, I guess, um, on this call, but there is no maximum. The, the beauty part about this is 
because you're streaming it to Facebook, um, once it gets out to Facebook, it's all of Facebook's infrastructure that's uh, caching it. So there's no, um, th there really isn't any upper limit. If, if this had to have been 200 people, you know, I think, I, I, I believe it scales to thousands, to, to be honest with you, but there's nothing special that we had to do. This was uh, more of the software I have in my quote unquote home studio that, um, that, that enabled most of this. Joe Peachy. Valerie, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Very good, as and always. If you have any other questions, feel free to, to email me or hit me up on LinkedIn. Yeah, well, you, 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 yeah, you, you, yeah, you can find us. We're, uh, we're relatively easy to find. 